Hey everybody, Travis here from Travis.media. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take your production WordPress website, the website that is live on the internet, and copy it, clone it to your local environment on your local computer for testing or for building or something. Um, it's very easy to do and it's a great idea, especially with WordPress um, 5.0 and Gutenberg on the way. If you want to test the Gutenberg plugin, you don't want to do it on your production site. You want to do it on a staging site or locally on your computer. So this is a great way to copy your site on your computer and then do all the testing there and get everything working so that when um, Gutenberg goes live, you won't be one of those people left behind. You'll have your site tested and you can even learn some things. You can play around, play around with it. Um, also, Elementor 2.0 is in beta. The beta version is released. If you want to test that, it's a great way to test that on your website too and play around with that on your local environment. And you do that by making a complete copy of your website onto your local computer. And I'm going to show you how to do that fairly easily with Duplicator. Duplicator is a plugin, a WordPress plugin with one plus million installs, over 1500 reviews, and a five star average. So it's a great plugin. It makes it really easy. And today I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. All right. So go to your website, go to plugins over here and click add new. All right. So we're going to do a keyword search for duplicator. Hit enter. And here it is, Duplicator WordPress Migration Plugin. This plugin also just uh, makes a copy of your site and allows you to move it to staging or from staging to production, whatever. But today we're going to copy it onto your local computer. All right, so click Install Now and activate it. Now there's one thing I always like to do. Uh, before I do this, and it may not be needed, I don't know, but uh, I like to get rid of my caching plugins. So I'm going to, I use Auto Optimize and Purge SiteGround Cache, which is a SiteGround uh, plugin uh, to purge the cache, so, um, which I host with SiteGround and I recommend it. So if you go up here to Auto Optimize and Delete Cache, I'm going to delete that first, and then I'm going to deactivate the plugin. I'm going to purge my cache here, and I'm going to go down and deactivate that plugin. So I have no caching plugins on my site. All right, so next, scroll down here to Duplicator. You'll see it in the, the side admin menu. Go to Duplicator, go to Packages. And you'll see I have no packages found. So you'll see a screen like this. Over here to the right, there's a Create New button. Click that. All right, so there's three steps here. Step one is Setup. So here's the name they suggest. Doesn't matter what that is. Uh, click Storage to view. Um, you don't have Duplicator Pro. You have the free plugin, so it is stored in your public HTML folder, WP Snapshots. Just an FYI, you don't need to know where that's at or anything because the plugin will delete it afterwards for you. So next drop down is archive. You don't need to do anything here. Just make sure that you uh, are not archiving only the database. You're doing the database and the website. So leave that untouched. If you go to the installer, there's some MySQL things. Just that's all optional. Leave that alone. So next up, click next to scan and, and it's going to scan your site and it's going to pull together everything and give you some options here before it actually builds the copy. And depending on how big your site is, this may take a few minutes. It usually just takes about 30 seconds. So hang on. All right, scan complete. This is step two. In this step, you're going to tell it what not to include in your build. And it's of course going to tell you what's good to go to. So in my server setup, it's good. Leave it alone. If I click on WordPress, I have a notice. So if I click on WordPress, there's one notice about my cache path. I have uh, one megabyte of cache data. Not a big deal. 
You can always go into your hosting company's control panel and delete that folder, but not a big deal for one megabyte. Um, so under here, archive, we have a notice on size checks, add-on sites, and name checks. So let's check that out. Size checks um, are going to tell me there are some folders that may not be included in my website, may not be part of my build, and I can filter these out. So I have a backup folder, filter that out. I have a staging folder, filter that out. These are all other things that I use for my own testing purposes. So um, if I go through all of these, I can filter all of those out. It's not part of my actual site build. So clicking on add-on sites, I have three. I'm going to get rid of those because I just want my main site. Name checks. I have um, one folder here that I don't need in my build. So I'm going to filter that out too. Now here's the thing. I always thought you could come down here, you could just click what you wanted to filter, you can come down here and continue with the build process. Um, you may be able to hit rescan, I'm not sure, but here's the way I do it, and this always just assures that it doesn't fail when it builds. I go through each one of these, so I have three sections with notices. So I'm going to take each section, and I'm going to click Add Filters and Rescan for each one of those. So I added my filters, I'm going to rescan that section. And if I do that for all three, 99% of the time I get a clean build. No problem, no two-step install needed. That's for another video. All right, scan complete. So I've run that one here. I'm gonna click this filter for add-on sites. I'm gonna add filters and rescan that section. And look, um, it may just be that when you select them all and you scan one section, it scans all three. I don't know. Whatever. Make sure you check this because it will fail often without doing this. So that section's good. This one looks okay. Uh, name checks. I don't have anything. So perhaps adding filters and maybe clicking this button does all three sets. Maybe it looks through all this again and, and filters. Whatever it is, just make sure that these have been rescanned. Okay? After that's done, a notice status has been detected. So I still have one notice. I think there are some subfolders here. At five megabytes, nine megabytes, three megabytes, not a big deal. Add it to the build. All right, so yes, I want to continue with the build process and I'm gonna click build. And this will take me to step three, which will give me the contents of my build. So building package. So step three, package completed. I didn't get a fail. If you get a screen here that says um, hosting timeout or something like that, and it suggests that, that you either retry or you do a two-part build, you can go either way. If you retry it, make sure you scan each one of those filtered sections. That makes the world a difference. If you want to do a two-part two install or you keep getting that, let me know. I'll do a video on how to set it up with the two-part install. So anyway, here I have two files. I have an installer file and I have an archive file. All right, so what I want to do is I want to download both files. So I'm going to download my installer. Let's just download it to my desktop. And that's a PHP file. And I want to download my archive. And I'm going to download that to my desktop as well. So click Save. That is 224 megabytes. So I'm going to pause this and come back when it's done. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. Right now, you have your installer.php file downloaded, and you should have your archive file downloaded. Mine is about 224 megabytes. Yours may be bigger. It may be smaller. But once it's done, you have these two files, OK? So the next thing we want to do is we want to take these and unpack them locally on our computer. And that's very easy to do with Duplicator because it does the work for you. So I normally use Local by Flywheel for this. But um, when I tried it out, I got an error, a router error. And um, you know I, I don't know what, what the deal is. Uh, I tried it again. It didn't work. So I'm going to use MAP because MAP is always good. And it's much more established than Local by Flywheel. So anyway. Let's open MAMP. 
If you use desktop server, you can use that. If you want to try a local by flywheel, you can try that. It's the same thing, same basic principle. So with MAMP, let's do this first. So let's go find my files. Yeah, I know there's an upgrade. Let's find my files in desktop. So right here, you're going to see. You're going to see in my, I have my installer PHP file, and I have my archive file. These are the two I downloaded. So on my desktop, and you can do this anywhere, I'm just going to create a new folder, and I'm going to name it Travis Media. How about this? Uh, dash local. All right. Now, here's the thing. If you use local by flywheel or desktop server, when you create a new site, it's going to install WordPress for you. It's going to do a WordPress installation. Map uh, doesn't. Maybe the pro does. But anyway, I want this folder to be empty. So if you use the other two programs and it installs WordPress, go into that folder, delete all the files, have a completely blank folder. All right, so with MAMP, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my desktop. Now, here are my two files, installer.php and my archive file. I'm going to copy that into my newly created folder. Whoops, into my new folder. So in my folder, I have the installer.php and my archive file. The installer.php runs the program. That's going to unpack your archive and build out your site. So. Um, I want to take MAMP, I want to go to Preferences, and where Web Server, and here where it says Document Root, I want to click this folder, and I want to go to Desktop, I want to find that folder I just created. Here it is, Travis Media dash local. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to hit Select. So my Document Root is Desktop, Travis Media Local, that's the folder I just created. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to start my server. And all you're doing is pointing to the folder that you have those two files in. That's all you're doing. All right. So my local address is localhost 8888. So I'm going to erase everything after that so that it's just that much. And I'm going to type in installer.php because that's the file we downloaded. This is the pro how the program runs. I'm going to hit return and it's going to bring up their duplicator program. So step one of four, deployment. All right, so here's step one. Archive, passing. Validation, passing. Options, you don't need to mess with it. So click this disclaimer and hit next. And it's going to run the deployment process. Should just take, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds. By the way, MAMP's a free program. Uh, so is Local by Flywheel. Uh, desktop server, I think you have to pay for it. Maybe you get a trial or maybe you get some kind of limitations. But uh, MAMP is free. Local by Flywheel is free. They're both great. But Local by Flywheel just didn't work. I kept getting router errors. And I think people have reported errors with that. So Anyway, stick to MAMP if you have it. All right, so step two, install the database. We don't have a database. Actually, we do have the database from our production site, which this is going to install for us, but we need to create a database for it to do that. Now, if you have one already made, you can just connect to it, but it's going to override it. Just be aware of that. Um, so what we want to do is just create a new database. That's the easiest thing. Then it'll copy all the information onto a new database. So our host, local host, our database, let's just make up a name, Travis Media Local Database. How about that? User, root. Password, root. Options, don't even mess with it. Um, now, if you set up a database ahead of time, you can test it here. It's not going to work for us because we haven't created it yet. This is going to create it for us. So, step two, hit next. Run installer with these settings. Server, local host, name. Here's my made up database name and my user is root. So sure. I'm going to click yes and it's going to install the database. And this is installing the data from my production site onto my local site and changing the URLs and changing the things that needs to be done to make it local. It does it for us. We don't have to go in and change those two fields manually. 
All right, step three, new settings. So my URL is 8888, same thing. And by the way, uh, you can change that or set that or check that under ports with map. map. My path, uh, uh, desktop, Travis Media Local, that's the folder we created. And the title is Travis Media Options. Don't worry about it. Now click Next. Updating data replacements. Maybe this is where um, the paths are being replaced to your local setup. So there we go. Step four for test the site. So let's go to site login. All right, look at this. This let me move, move myself here. All right. The site has been successfully migrated. Final steps, optionally review duplicate. Oh, yeah. Two, remove installation files now. You want to do this, okay? Actually, first, check your site to see if it works. So I'm gonna go up here to visit site, and I will see that it is the exact same site, but locally on my computer. There it is. All right, up here, localhost 8888. All right. Let's make sure everything's up to date. Let's see if my latest blog post is up there. Yep, latest blog post. Everything looks good. So the next step is you want to delete these big archive files. Uh, so I'm going to go remove installation files now. I'm going to click that. And I think that removes them. I don't think it takes you to a screen where you can choose again. I think once you click it, they're gone. All right. Installer file cleanup ran. File removed. Installer, installer backup, installer SQL, log, and database. All right. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now I have a local copy of my site. I can throw Elementor. I can throw Gutenberg. I can uh, wipe it clean and build a fresh one and then duplicate it back to my production site if I wanted to. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and subscribe to the channel. And follow me at Travis.media. I blog regularly and um, I like to create good content for you. And so that's all. Have a great day and thanks for watching.